Do you remember how I said just over here, right, that you get these numbers coming up in uh, right angled triangles over and over again, okay? And that's because these are the nice whole numbers where you get like a happy triangle that sits. If I made it like, you know, four, uh, seven, what's the third side? It's gonna be some jumbled up mess with like irrational numbers and that kind of thing. So that's why they tend to be avoided, okay? Now the same kind of thing happens with trig ratios, but instead of sides, it's angles, okay? There are some special angles, I'm gonna list them out for you, where these ratios, they have special values, okay? So, little, little subheading under here, which is special values for the trigonometric ratios. Okay, there's a few of these, but just this morning for the sake of time, I'm just going to go show you three, okay? They are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, okay? Now here's where we're going to begin. We'll start with the smallest one, 30 degrees, okay? I want you to reach for your calculator, reach for your calculator, and I want you to punch in. I mean, out of the three trig ratios, we usually start with sine, don't we, okay? So for 30 degrees, I want you to punch in, what's sine 30? What's sine 30? Yeah, a half. a half. You should get 0 0.5 on your calculator, which is a little bit surprising because if you just go like, you've done sine 30, just do sine 31, just for the sake of it, okay? When you put that in, okay, you don't get something nice and neat. You get these decimal points repeating on and on forever, okay? You get a, you get a disaster, basically. So sine 30 is special, okay? It's a half. Now, taking advantage of exactly what we just did, right? see this over here? We said they didn't give you a diagram, but it kind of implies a diagram, doesn't it, right? It implies this triangle. Well, this, there's no diagram here, but it kind of implies one, right? It implies a triangle like this, okay? 30 degrees, looks like it's a small angle, so I'm gonna chuck it in over here, okay? I've got 30 degrees over there, and it's sine, it's sine. Which pair of sides is that telling me about again? Opposite it's opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse. That should be 1 over 2. You see that? Are you happy with that idea? Okay. Now, again, just like I did here, if I know two sides in a right angled triangle, I can pretty, pretty quickly work out this third side, right? Let's actually do this one. We'll do it with, um, with Pythagoras. If I call this side over here x, I'm not going to write it in for a second because we will work it out. What can I write? with what can I write that's true out of Pythagoras about x? Have a look. I can say okay. x squared, right, plus one squared, the other side, should be two squared. Good. a squared, b squared, c squared. That's fine. I know what one squared is. I know what two squared is. x squared plus one equals four, right? So x squared should be three. So what's x? It's just the square root of three, right? Now, it's worth mentioning, um, x squared equals 3. There are actually two solutions to that, not just one, the one that we wrote down. There's the positive square root of 3. There's also the negative square root of 3. Because if you square that guy, it'll still be 3, right? But I don't need to worry about that solution. At least in this case, why not? Why don't I need to worry about the negative square root of 3? Yeah, I have a length here. I'm working out a distance, OK? So that thing has to be positive, right? So that's my answer. So that's what I'm going to put down here. Okay, so there's the square root of 3. Now that I know all three sides in here, I don't just know sine 30. I can also work out cos 30 and tan 30. And they should give me these nice numbers, right? I should be able to say, I'll do a point here, cos 30 is going to be adjacent on a hypotenuse, right? Root three on two, yeah? Mm -hmm. And lastly, tan for this angle, tan 30, that's going to be opposite on adjacent. One on root three. One on root three, very good. Okay, now, you might think, oh, okay, uh, I've done 30. I've done all three ratios for 30. Seems like a logical next step to go to 45. You could go to 45, but it's not the logical next step. Can anyone see why the logical next step is 60? 
<laughs> number one, number one, it's double the size. So you're like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of a nice link between them. But more importantly, think about what we've been looking at for the last 20 minutes. They're complementary. You see that? They're complementary. So these guys are complements. Okay. So therefore, um, start with sign. Sine 60 and cos 60 and tan 60. I should be able to work out just by looking at these ones I already know, right? So for instance, let's think about sine 60. Sine 60 should be equal to cos 30. Remember? That's the relationship between these two guys, yeah? yeah. And I've written down cos 30 already. There he is, root 3 on 2. Okay. Root 3 on 2. <coughs> cos 60, that should be sine 30, because these guys are complements. And that was the very first one I wrote down. That's a half. Okay. Now, 1060, this is a little bit trickier. Watch out, right? 1060, remember, um, we started off, we said, well, 10 is really sine on cos. You agree with that? Yeah. That's, that's literally its definition, okay? But I just worked out what each of these are, right? They're going to be cos 30 on sine 30, right? So this guy is just like this guy, but upside down. See that this is sine 30 on cos 30, but this one's upside down, cos 30 on sine 30? They're reciprocals of each other, you see that? So what's the reciprocal of one on root three? Root three it's one. just root three, right? The reciprocal of yeah. one on root three is just root three. Okay. So there you go, you can see these are special values because rather than you go to your calculator and you get some rubbish out of that, you're like, what is that even equal to? you know exactly what these are equal to, which is why another name for these are the exact values for the trigonometric ratios. All right, we did 30, we did 60, last one. Okay. We drew this one diagram, right, and it covered 30 and 60. That's nice. It's because they're complements, yeah? It's not going to cover 45. I need a new diagram. What's that diagram going to look like? I'm going to start with my right angle triangle. Okay. Now, if I make one of the angles 45, like say that one on the bottom left, you do the angle of some of the triangle. What's the other one? It's also going to be 45, isn't it? Right? Because 45, this is a funny thing. 30 and 60 are complements, but 45 is its own complement, right? He's like the ultimate antisocial guy. He's like, I don't need any of you guys. I'll be a complement with myself, okay? So 45 and 45, they exist in both corners, okay? Now, if I've got two equal angles over here and over here, right, what does that tell me about these two sides over here? Right, this triangle is isosceles, right? Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So if this guy and this guy are equal, I'm just going to say, like, I just made up this triangle. I just made it that big, okay? I'm going to make this one and one, okay? Because they're equal. I could have made it two and two, or three and three if I like. I'm still going to get the same answer out in a second. Use Pythagoras again, just like we did here, okay? This time I'm working out the hypotenuse, okay? So I should be able to say a squared, plus b squared equals c squared. Right? 1 plus 1, that's 2, equals this. So if c squared equals 2, what's c by itself? I had uh, c squared equals 3 before, so I got root 3. So this is going to be root 2. Okay? And you can go ahead, if you like, you can draw yourself a triangle that's uh, 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter, and you will find that this third side has to be about 1.4 centimeters. Okay. I've got all three sides. I'm ready to go. Sign 45. Opposite <coughs> on hypotenuse, right? One on, root two. one on root two. Very good. I didn't even need to look at the triangle for the next one because remember we said cos 45 is its own complement. Sorry, 45 is its own complement. So cos 45 is the same as sine 45. Do you see that? Because they're complements, right? So it's still one on root two. Okay, tan 45, he's the best one of all. He's the simplest of the lot. Opposite, opposite, on adjacent. Actually, he's just 
one. So, you can exhale. You're not going to have to write anything else this morning. You've learnt nine exact values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the first time you've met them. So they seem a bit intimidating because nine things is a lot to remember. But just like a phone number, remember it's a phone number before? That's ten, ten digits, right? But it's not that hard if you keep on using it, right? So we're going to work next week on how to get a little more familiar with these. These triangles are going to be really important and we're going to use them. Okay.